Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to discuss the changes to the functionality of foreground services that Android 14 introduces. Now just in case you came here looking for a tutorial of how to build a foreground service, then I will link my article on this subject in the description of this video below. So to just remind you what foreground service is. So foreground service is a special type of service for critical real-time background work. And examples of use cases where you use foreground services include media playback, for example, when you play your favorite podcast or GPS navigation, activity monitoring where you jog around and the system records your uh, road, etc. Now, when you use foreground service, when you launch foreground service, it must show a notification to the user. So the user should be aware of the fact that a foreground service is executing in the background. However, starting with Android 13, the users have a choice to hide this notification. And the name foreground comes from the fact that whenever this service is launched, even though it executes in the background, the system, Android operating system, assigns the entire process that hosts that foreground service a foreground a priority. This basically means that the system is much less likely to kill this process for the purpose of claiming its memory back for other applications. All in all, at a very high level, that's what foreground services are. Now, there are also foreground service types. And foreground service type is an XML attribute or runtime argument that was introduced in Android 10. So it's relatively recent addition to Android framework. It was mandatory to access very specific set of features prior to Android 14. For example, if your foreground service would access camera or media projection in order to capture the screen of the device, then you would need to specify the corresponding type. However, the system for most use cases wouldn't just care about what type you specify for your foreground services. However, this is going to change in Android 14. So in apps that target Android 14 or later, foreground service type becomes mandatory. So if you don't specify the foreground service type for your foreground service, then the system will throw an exception. Some types require special permissions. So beforehand, we just specified this one single foreground service permission and that was good enough. But now if you, for example, want to use camera in your foreground services, you also need to specify that this service is of type camera and also specify one additional permission that we will see a little bit later in this video. And furthermore, not only you need to specify uh, special permissions for some foreground services, but in addition, system performs all kinds of runtime checks to make sure that foreground services that you launch actually adhere to their specific types. So for example, for a camera foreground service, for a foreground service that accesses camera, the system will verify that this service actually uses camera at runtime. And for example, if that service will try to access location, then the system will throw exception stating that, you know, this service does not have location permission. So these are the foreground services types. And the reason why they were introduced is to once again, tighten and restrict the usages of foreground services in order to make sure that developers and companies do not abuse this feature and in order to make the user more aware of what's going on. And my guess is that in the future versions of Android, these types will become more prominent and maybe the user will also be able to choose which types they allow and which types they do not allow. So this is kind of um, a continuation of a multi-year trend in Android development towards privacy and giving user more control of what's going on. Now, before we discuss the specific foreground services types and I explain to you how you use them, I would just want to make sure that you understand how to specify this type. So there are two ways to do that. First of all, as we said, our XML attributes. So when you specify your service in your manifest, you just add this foreground service type. And in this case, in this example, that will be data sync, a service used to sync data with the backend. Or alternatively, you can specify foreground service types at runtime when you call to start foreground inside your services. So that will be the third argument to start foreground method, foreground service types. And of course, you can specify multiple types using OR operators in both the XML version or runtime version of this specification. And now I would like to jump into the official Android documentation and discuss some of the more interesting, more important foreground service types. This is the official documentation of the changes introduced in Android 14. 
And this specific page discusses foreground service type, the fact that they are required. So in Android 10, Google introduced this foreground service type attribute. And in Android 14, if your app targets Android 14, if you target lower versions of Android, then for some time you will be able to use foreground services the old way. But once you target Android 14, this attribute becomes mandatory. And then they list all the available foreground service types. So that will be camera, connected device, data sync, health, location, media playback, media projection, microphone, phone call, remote messaging, short service, special use, and system accepted. The last three are kind of interesting, so we will discuss them a little bit later in this video. And then whenever you declare your foreground service, you also need to set its foreground service type. And as we said, some of these types require additional permission. So notice that here we set this Android foreground service permission, that's the old one. And in addition, we declare foreground service media playback permission. And this permission is a special type of permission that corresponds to media playback foreground service. If you don't request this permission inside your manifest, your service will crash at runtime. And in addition to just declaring the permission, for some foreground service types, the system will perform runtime checks. So for example, if you declare foreground service type location, then the system will ensure, basically check, that when you start, when you launch your foreground service of type location, you ask for either access course location or access file location permissions. And not only that, you must ask for these permissions before you launch your foreground service. So that's a major change. If you want to launch foreground service type location, if you want to basically use foreground service to track user's location, then you must ensure that you already have either access course location or access file location permissions before you launch your foreground service. That's important, otherwise your application will crash. And now they basically list all these foreground service types and the various conditions and prerequisites that you must satisfy in order to use them. So for example, for camera, you need to use foreground service camera additional permission. And runtime requirements is that you need to request camera runtime permission. And again, you must make sure that you have this camera runtime permission before you launch your foreground service. Otherwise, the system will not be happy with you. Then we have connected device type of foreground service, also has a special permission and a very long list of runtime requirements that you can read if you would need to use this uh, foreground service type. Data sync, the one that I used in the example, and I use this foreground service data sync type, but it has no runtime requirements. Here they list the descriptions that you need to specify. And in addition, they say that in the future, uh, basically this foreground service type will be deprecated. It's recommended that you migrate to use either work manager or user initiated transfer data transfer jobs. So basically this type of uh, foreground service exists right now, but they're going to deprecate it in favor of a work manager. And I remind you that work manager, if you need a tutorial of work manager, by the way, I will link my tutorial uh, below as well. Uh, so work manager has this expedited flag, which on uh, earlier versions of Android will launch a foreground service for you. So basically you can use work manager to launch foreground service implicitly. And then they have this health, new type of service, health foreground service, media, etc. Now uh, you can read through all these types. I will link to this documentation page in the description of this video. But what I want to discuss now are three special types of services. And the first one will be short service. So short service does not require any permissions and does not have any runtime requirements. And the use case for a short service is basically anything that you would like to do, which is not covered by other foreground service types, but which completes in less than three minutes. So short service allows you to run your foreground service for three minutes. And in addition to that, there are additional requirements of how you stop your short service. So if you need this foreground service type short, then make sure to read this documentation very thoroughly. And then we have special use service. And that's basically a type that the authors of this feature introduced for all the use cases that they didn't cover with the existing features and neither covered with this short service. So short service is limited to just three minutes, but this special use isn't limited. However, when you use this special use and it allows you to kind of execute foreground service just like before, when you use it, they require you to specify this special use foreground service subtype and the value of this property special use foreground service subtype should be an explanation of why you need 
this special hue. So they do allow you to use foreground services just like you used them before, but you need to provide an explanation. And of course, this explanation might be reviewed by Google Play team. So make sure that this explanation actually makes sense to them. And lastly, we have system exempted foreground service type, which is restricted to special applications. For example, device is in demo mode or the application is a device owner or profile owner, or for example, it's a device admin application or uh, this apps holding schedule exact alarm or use exact alarm permissions. So this is a special type of service that your application can use only if it already satisfies one of these very special conditions. So not applicable to most Android applications, but maybe for example, if you already uh, use this schedule exact alarm permission, which I remind you was also kind of downgraded in Android 14, then you might also use this uh, system exempted foreground service type. And that's it in a nutshell. Once again, just to go over the high level details, we have foreground service types, which become mandatory once your apps target Android 14 or above. And in addition, some of these types require uh, new permissions to be specified in your manifest. And for some of these types, the system will perform runtime checks to ensure that you did whatever needs to be done. So for example, for camera foreground service type, the system will verify that your application holds camera runtime permission at the time when you call start foreground. So make sure that your apps satisfy this condition if you target Android 14. And that's it, that's the change in Android 14. We will take additional step forward to make sure that Android applications respect users' privacy, respect battery usage restrictions, and to make sure that in the future, they will probably be able to give users more control over how applications execute foreground services. If your applications don't use foreground services, then that's basically just nothing burger. But if your app does use foreground services, then I highly recommend that you review how you use these services and also test your application for compliance before you bump your target SDK version to 14. And maybe now it's the best time to do that because Android 14 is going to be released really, really soon. All right, thank you for watching this video. I will link to all the resources that I mentioned below in the description and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.